Welcome back to Doctrine Forensics. I'm going to ask a question of all the listeners. I think I know the answer to it already, but I am going to pose the question anyway. Is the church dumbing down Christianity? I think it is. Your pastor may be giving you an unabridged version of the Bible. Well, there's an article that was written a while ago by Megan Bailey of beliefnet.com, which talks about this very issue. In fact, often I get asked, why did I actually start the channel here at Doctor Forensics? Well, Megan has helped me along because she has so eloquently written exactly the concern that we have here at Doctor Forensics. So we're going to talk about that in just a second. We live in a day and age, guys, you know this, where the Bible is a footnote to the sermon. Right? The pastor will get up and read the text, if he reads the text at all, and then he kind of jumps off. And, and, and if a man is using a Bible and even calls himself a pastor, that doesn't mean he's actually preaching the Bible. So, so what we try to do here is we want people to get into the Word until the Word gets into them. And the reason we get in the Word till the Word gets into us, and I think this is the reason we have so many spiritual cowards in the church today that won't stand up for their faith, is because they have no conviction. See, see, they don't know why that you don't know why you believe what you believe. And it's not even really your fault because it's the byproduct of being under pastors, so to speak, who want to dumb down theology light sermons, right? Because we want to make everybody feel good. We want to invite as many people as we come so they don't feel pressured or convicted over sin. We live in a day and age where people like to tickle ears, right? We, we have people preaching sermonettes, which are actually producing Christianettes, <laughs> See, this is the problem. This is why our college students are, leave, are leaving high school and going to college, and they're falling away from the faith. The statistic is 60 to 80%. 60 to 80% of high school students, our kids, are going to go to college, and they will never come back to church until maybe they're later in life. Why? Because they don't know why they believe what they believe. They've heard spiritually shallow messages. And what Paul says is, don't do that. We need a day and age where we're tired of hearing pirates of sermons and puppets and parrots trying to portray themselves as preachers, and we need prophets of God who are going to proclaim the word of God to the people of God and leave the results to God. Amen? Amen. That's what we need today. And, and here's just a side note, and I say this with a lot of respect. Listen to me. If you're at a church, and I don't know what church you're at, and you're not getting the regular feeding of your soul through a daily diet, a weekly diet of the word of God, brother, you need to find another church. Listen, you wouldn't keep eating food that isn't nourishing for the body and paying for it. Why are you going to do that with your soul, right? Your soul is infinitely, eternally more important. Megan Bailey wrote, In the past few years, you may have felt that you aren't getting as much out of each sermon on Sundays. You may have even felt that some of the teachings were rudimentary or even childish. These are signs that your church is dumbing down Christianity. Churches are starting to offer only emotional, feel-good theology, which will only hurt Christians in the long run. Real questions aren't being asked, doubts aren't being addressed, and we're only learning the basics of faith, if that. These practices are halting believers that want to grow in their faith, and let's underscore the word believers. One of the biggest questions is why the church began to dumb down sermons at church. In the 1960s, the United States was considered a Christian country. However, today, less than 65% of Americans claim to be a member of a church congregation, and I'm sure they do so with good reason. Our world has changed drastically in the last few decades, and the church has obfuscated and left its first love. The traditions of the church begin to change to adhere to a generation of people that missed out on going to church. Many hadn't gone into a church building for anything more than a funeral or a wedding. Organized religion lost on many followers, but the generation was still interested in spirituality. And yes, they are interested in spirituality because we have things such as Buddhism and Hinduism and New Age and Wiccan and so on and so forth. The church realized that it had to come up with a new way to minister. I will certainly credit Satan into introducing this watered-down platform 
of what we're hearing in today's churches. They began to dumb down their sermons going back to the very basics of Christianity in order to make it more relevant for this growing group. There is a massive problem of dumbing down the Word of God. Now, due to these changes in the church, we have replaced rich theology with emotional music and reminders that God loves everyone. Now, this is great for bringing in the outsiders through the doors. However, it is poor at growing believers into mature witnesses with a deep understanding of God, as we find written so well in the book of Ephesians chapter 4. If you ask most Christians today any theological question about the Bible, you are bound to get a response that suggests such discussions are only meant for a pastor or church leadership. It has now become accepted that there isn't much else you need to know except that God loves you. Now, if you dive deeper, though, the opposite will begin to be true. The more that you learn about God, his word, and the theology of the Bible, the more you can love, you are given that much more to adore and be amazed by. Christians have become complacent about their faith. They don't bother to learn anymore because the church isn't giving them any avenues to seek knowledge like it used to. It's one thing to not know much about the faith, but another to have no desire to grow. Nowadays, anyone can start a church. As long as it's engaging and entertaining enough, people show up. The church used to be a place where believers could come to learn robust doctrine and theology. Just as a marriage cannot be sustained by the tumble of infatuation, a life of faith cannot be sustained by passionate emotion. Yes, it may be a wonderful and necessary entryway, but without depth and knowledge and understanding, it will be blown here and there by every wind of teaching and by every cunning and craftiness of people in their deceitful scheming. Ephesians 4, 14. Another red flag is that there's only focus on the church and not faith. Another huge issue with the dumbing down of Christianity is church members putting focus on their pastors, church leadership, and the church itself over faith in God. Their lives become revolved around the church, church activities, camp meetings, conferences, and Bible study groups. While these things can be great, the majority of Christians are putting effort to the church and not to Jesus Christ. For example, their vocabulary becomes about church and my pastor rather than about Jesus Christ. They believe that it is bad to question the teachings and practices of their church. They never research issues for themselves and they let the pastors interpret the Bible for them. Danger, danger, danger. They don't take time to study the word of God for their own spiritual growth. Why should they though? The church, dumbing down the faith so much, is not encouraging the members to grow. Dumbing down Christianity is causing believers to be unable to grow in their faith. While it is great to help in new members that might not know anything about their faith, it is not helping to create deep relationships for believers with Jesus Christ. I want to thank you for listening to Doctrine Forensics. If you like this material, please click, like, subscribe, comment, and share. God bless you and your family.